guys, uh, I'm just going to have a very quick check um, on equipment today. Um, I, I don't want to go on for hours about this because it's boring, quite frankly. And you know, every other artist does like three hours on the equipment they use because it's a, a great big deal to them for some reason. Um, I'm just going to tell you what I use now. Okay, not what I'd recommend for beginners or anything because it's it's basically the same and that's the way it should be. Right, so uh, without further ado, first thing you need is the support. Okay, uh, I use one of these, it's a half imperial drawn board. This is one I use uh, frequently, as you can see from the, the muck on it. Uh, important little addition here is the, the little metal plate in the back here. Okay, what this basically does is it attaches to one of these, which is a, off the top of a camera tripod. Okay. And then it sits on top of the, the tripod. Okay. Now the fantastic thing about this is rather than a fixed easel, uh, it's very lightweight, so you can chuck it in a rucksack basically. Um, it also means that you can adjust the angle of the board. You see that? Yeah? And what that basically does is it allows you to let watercolour do what it does best, which is paint itself. And um, it also lets you adjust to the height. So whether you're sitting down or standing up to paint, it doesn't matter. You're always going to have the board at the optimum height for you to work, uh, which is very important for your posture, not only. Um, but what it does as well, because it allows you to stand up, um, and I should I should mention here that one of the, the pivotal points in my career was when I started standing up to paint. Okay, that's when I started coming on leaps and bounds. And it's for a number of reasons. Um, not only does it give you more freedom to move about and whatnot, but it lets you do something that's extremely important in painting, which is it allows you to take that step back to look at your work, you know, see the big picture again. So you can get you can get too um, involved with detail, can't you? It's quite easy to do, we all do it. Um, so being able to step back and look at the big picture again helps you evaluate, you know, and helps you answer that age-old question, is it finished yet? Well, that, that'll help you do that. So. Standing up to work is a fantastic thing, and that's one good way you'll be able to do it if you use that sort of setup. Uh, you can get that setup on my website, it's not expensive. Uh, I recommend these Hammerstar tripods. It's a Hammerstar 61, if you want to be specific, because uh, it has this little handle, which means you can sort of move the whole contraption around as and when you feel like it. Um, and also, they're also very lightweight, you're just chucking the, the back of the rucks up basically. Okay, second, what else do we need? Um, Palette. Palette, I guess. Uh, this is the palette I use. Okay, uh, it's um, this was originally a, a John Pike Bigwell, if I remember correctly. Okay, but all you're basically looking at is you want lots of mixing space, and you want nice big wells to put your paints in. Now the reason for that is so you can use big brushes. Okay, big brushes help you stop fiddling. Okay. If there's one thing that will kill a watercolour stone dead right from the start, it is fiddling and faffing about with silly little brushes like this, okay? So, big brushes, big palette. Means you can mix big washes, you can use tube paints, which I might add, I personally feel are much better than using half pans. Um, the other important thing I should mention about this palette is it's airtight which is extremely important, okay? So when I'm finished, I basically just whack that sponge in there. I know it's manky, isn't it? Give it a spray, put the lid on, and that's it, it's airtight. And these paints will stay fresh like this for weeks. I mean, these these are like, you know, well, I don't know how many weeks old now. Yeah, fantastic. And much better than faffing around with silly little stupid things like this, okay? This is the sort of thing I see all the time um, at workshops. People bring these along and, you know, um, they get shouted at, they don't, they don't, <laughs> I don't shout at people. But basically with something like this, I don't care how experienced you are, if you're mixing colour in little wells like that, you have no idea how strong that paint is until you put it to the paper, by which time it's too late, isn't it? Okay, you've already made the mistake, now you've got to correct it, which takes time, etc, etc, okay? So with something like this, what you can do is you can mix up a batch of whatever very, very quickly, you can see exactly what tone it is, you know, whether it's dark or light. Um, and you can check the consistency of the paint as well. You can check whether it's, you know, very uh, liquidy or whether it's more towards, sort of, you know, butter sort of idea for when you're getting further on in the painting. And it's, that helps you do something that's really fantastic with watercolour, which is control the water. Everybody thinks that the secret to, to producing fantastic watercolours and being good at with them 
it's controlling the pigment and it's not it's controlling the water okay and that's kind of why i have little things like this kicking about as well sponge tea towel you know um kitchen roll spray it's all about controlling water um and i will show you through the course of the, the videos how to do that very effectively and very simply okay um next brushes these are the brushes i use okay I don't have an obscene amount of brushes because quite simply you don't need them. Um, to be honest, you could probably get away with these two. Okay, these two brushes, that's all you really need. Um, this is a two inch flat, it's a synthetic mix. Most of my brushes are synthetic mixes of some description or other. And, you know, a detailer. Uh, now when I say detailer, this is actually a size 12. Okay. When I say detail, I don't mean going down to something stupid like a size 3 or whatever, because that's when you start fiddling. This is the thing that I use right at the very, 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 very end of the painting to put in absolute one-time final details. You know, like the little birds you see in my paintings and the little guy off in the distance. This is the brush I would use for that, and that only, okay? Apart from that, this. This is, this is the baby. This is what does it. This is what produces all that stuff you see on my website, this brush. Um, other things like sponges, a few natural sponges, you know, some a water spray pencil obviously. This is a 6B clutch pencil, it's all I ever use. 6B because it's a nice soft lead which can be um, erased from the paper without leaving a dark line, yeah? If you use a 2B pencil you tend to leave indentations in the paper and watercolour runs into the path of least resistance, you know? It's got water in it, hasn't it? So that's the way it works. So if you've put a nice little indentation in the paper for it, it will go into there. So when you come to rub out your pencil lines at the end, that's why they don't rub out, because you've used a 2B and it's went in. So that line is now a paint line, not a pencil line. There you go, you didn't know that, did you? Um, paints, I use Daniel Smith, Daniel Smith watercolours every time. I've got a few other little things in here, razor blades, a few oil pastels as well. Um, Oh, paper, paper, very important. This is the paper I use. Uh, I actually use four different kinds of paper. Bockingford is probably the one I use the most, I would say, okay? And that is because it has certain properties. A lot of people view Bockingford as a student paper. Absolute nonsense. Um, it's a fantastic paper, it's an artist quality paper, okay? So don't listen to anybody who says that to you, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, Arsh, Two Rivers, and uh, you Saunders as well. Right, so I think that basically covers equipment really, you know? That's all you really need to know. Um, I'm going to put a list at the bottom of the, the video here, uh, just so you have a proper list of what I use, the colours, that, that sort of idea. Um, you know, in the interest of disclosure basically. But, um, you know, it's basic stuff, basic stuff. You don't need a whole load of fancy equipment, all these stupid stippler brushes and whatnot for painting you know whatever um it's, it's all nonsense you've got to remember something um a lot of the magazines uh, etc that recommend all this stuff they're so they're um sponsored by art supplies companies art supplies manufacturers now art supplies manufacturers secret here they don't care if you get good yeah they don't care they don't want you to get good because as you get better, you will start paring down your your requirements, okay? You know, you go out, you buy 20 brushes to start with, and you only use six of them. What's the point? They, they don't, they know this. <laughs> they know you're not going to use 20 brushes, yeah? But they will sell you them anyway, because they are in the business of selling you art supplies. It is a business. They don't care whether you get good, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, when you take, read things in magazines and all the rest of it, just take it with a pinch of salt um, and just be wise with your investments. Buy good equipment, it's going to last you rather than going for the, you know, the, the, the next new shiny bright thing um, because you don't need it. It will just sit in the drawer. You know, see this palette? I bought this probably 20 years ago and it's sat in the drawer ever since. I've never ever used it. It was a complete waste of money. Yeah, and I've got brushes that have sat in the drawer for years that were a complete waste of money. And every single artist you will speak to has at least six colours that they bought that have sat in the drawer and never got used because they thought it was a great thing. Which is a one good reason for buying online rather than going to the art shop. Okay, 
in the art shop is too much temptation. There's lots of stuff there. Lots of lovely colours, lots of nice shiny new brushes. Okay, you will spend money that you don't need to. So, so shop online, use my website. Right, anyway, <laughs> that's it. Uh, one more thing you will need, sorry, tape. Yeah, you need some tape to stick your paper to your board. Um, but apart from that, I think that's it really. Kind of covered it. So that's equipment, done. Go get some. Um, and then we're going to move on to other things which are a bit more important, I think. Yeah. Um, so uh, I hope that's uh, that's cleared up things for you a little bit. I will see you in the next video. See ya.